The Advisory Plan Commission is a seven-member board that oversees policies regarding the growth and development of Avon, Indiana. Issues that come before the Advisory Planning Commission include transportation planning, environmental planning, long-range planning, zoning code compliance, and review of development proposals and permits. Plans that are developed by the Advisory Plan Commission include Comprehensive Plan, Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, Subdivision Control Ordinance, and Official Zoning Maps. The Advisory Plan Commission meets once a month at Avon Town Hall. A full schedule of their public meetings can be found online at avonindiana.gov. Welcome to the Town of Avon Advisory Plan Commission meeting. If you're interested in having a copy of the agenda, they are available on the tables to the right of the audience. We will be conducting business as outlined on the agenda. From time to time, the board may deviate from the agenda, and as president of this body, I will inform those in attendance of any deviations. <clears throat> this meeting is being recorded for the public record. Because of this, we request that personal conversations are kept to a minimum and that all cell phones are set to vibrate. Any phone calls should be taken outside of the chambers. If you are interested in commenting during the public hearing portion of the commission's deliberations, please sign up on the sheets located on the tables to the right of the audience. When your name is called, please step forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Please address your comments to the board and not to the staff or to the petitioner. Your comments should relate directly to the case at hand. <clears throat> During the conduct of the public hearing portion of the commission's deliberations, the petitioner will have 10 minutes to present their case to the commission. Remonstrators will have 10 minutes to present objections to the petition. Persons in support of the petition, other than the petitioner, will have 10 minutes to present support for the petition. Finally, the petitioner will close the public hearing portion of the presentation with a five-minute rebuttal period. Once the public hearing is closed, no additional testimony will be heard unless it is solicited by members of the commission during the question and answer phase of the commission's deliberations. Subdivision plat and development plat petitions are ministerial requests, meaning that if the proposal meets the requirements set forth in the town's development ordinances, the plan commission must approve the request. In the interest of transparency, state law requires that the plan commission hold a public hearing even if the development proposal must be approved. Responses to public comments and questions may be given once the public hearing portion is closed. We do understand that there may be several persons who wish to speak. In order to keep the meeting running in a timely fashion, we would request that you not repeat previous comments. Thank you for your assistance in facilitating a respectful, fair, and timely meeting. Again, welcome to our meeting. Please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's do our roll call. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I know I forgot something. <laughs> Jennifer Spencer. Uh, Bill Reed. Uh, Mason Pike. Present. Catherine Ransberg. Here. Paul Guckenberger. Here. Um, Damn it. David Kaufman. Greg Susan. Present. And who's the other one? Dave Kaufman. Dave Kaufman. And he's absent. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, do we have meeting minutes that need to be approved? Did Ian send you the e, uh, minutes via? No. No, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll uh, forward those minutes to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, I think what happened was Ian was continuing, was doing those minutes, uh, and he probably emailed them out. And if you all, maybe you didn't get them. We've been having some issues with our email uh, because of our domain is so brand new uh, that it accidentally goes to the trash sometimes. So, or the spam folder. Oh, spam. So you may check your spam folder and find a whole slew of, of emails from us in there because I normally respond and then people will say, well, why didn't you respond? I went, eh, you may want to check your spam folder. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we'll, we'll have the meetings for August at the next meeting. 
just a suggestion. You can go to the website and go to the meetings, click on that, and it'll you can pull all this information up. And it looks like we have a couple of requests for continuances, or one request for continuance. I want to do public comment first. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, now would be the time for anybody present to make public comments on any items that are not on the agenda. And seeing nobody in the room who is available to make public comment, the public comment hearing section is closed. Now, move on to the request for continuances or agenda modifications. Yeah, we have three items on the agenda for continuance. Uh, <coughs> DPR 2306, which is Sudan Trucking, uh, located at 8379 Kingston Street. DPR 2310, Avon Business Park, which was a DPR for Flex Industrial at 8360 Kingston Street. And then a King's a, a convenience store de development DPR twenty three thirteen a convenience store at one one three seven North Avon Avenue. Um, all three of these have gone to TAC. All three of them uh, are well. All three of them are awaiting revised plans. So in the Sudan trucking case, uh, they went to the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Board of Zoning Appeals approved, I believe, a special exception for them, but put a condition on that. And that uh, condition involved them f filing revised plans with us. The Avon Business Park actually had a public hearing uh, with the, the Plan Commission and uh, the Plan Commission was not entirely enthused with the waiver requests. So they wanted to do some redesign of their industrial buildings and they have not filed revised plans. Both of those I've contacted them and they uh, will have revised plans in for the October meeting. The convenience store, they went to TAC, uh, but they never filed revised plans on on the, the TAC comments. And the existing plan set is not enough where we you could safely say it's consistent with the ordinance. Um, but they also indicated that they'll have revised plans in time for the August, me uh, October meeting. Should be noted DPR 2306 and DPR 2310 uh, have been on the agenda a couple times before. Uh, you are allowed to, uh, to continue that according to your rules of police procedure for six months from the date of that initial hearing. And that means both of those uh, are, uh, you would be permitted to continue that up to the December 19th, 2023 meeting date. So those two, it's it's fine to continue them for a month. You won't be violating your own rules and procedure. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Any questions for staff on these um, requests for continuances? If there are no questions, we'll entertain a motion to continue these three items. I move that we continue the items previously reported by staff. To the next commission meeting in October. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All uh, DPR 2306, DPR 2310, and DPR 2313 are all continued to the next plan commission meeting, which is on October 23rd. Old business, looks like there's none. New business looks like there's none, but we do have other business. Yeah, this is, and, and it really is an introduction uh, in the, to a comprehensive plan update. Uh, the council had uh, set aside some money to update the comprehensive plan. Our current comprehensive plan was updated in, I believe, 2017. Um, and it, it, the document needs some updating. Uh, one, we need to. Uh, better established land use recommendations for a lot of the area of the town because we have a significant amount of infill development occurring but a lot of times the infill development doesn't have an overt recommendation in the comprehensive plan um and uh at 2017 we're at you know five uh six years so it's about time to start looking at updating it um on july 10th we uh issued a request for qualifications for urban planning consultants for a comp plan update. We did, we did receive four uh, submissions on that. Uh, one of them from HWC Engineering uh, Civil Blueprint. Uh, I believe that was the, the set of firms that did the update of the uh, Unified Development Ordinance. We received a RFQ from American Structure Point 
V3 companies and uh, Housel Levine. Uh, I did, for, we're, we're not asking for any sort of recommendation or disposition at this minute. What we are planning on doing is putting together a selection committee. And the purpose of that selection committee would be to forward to you all a recommendation to then forward a recommendation to the council uh, to select a, a consultant on it. Um, Ms. Spencer has, has uh, volunteered to serve on the committee, selection committee as a, um, as a member of, of the plan commission. And so um, these are for her so she can take a look at them. The, the, what, the member of the council, member of the plan commission, me, Ian, and uh, the town manager are the three that are going to look at them. We'll put together a recommendation. We'll bring it to you during a public hearing, and then you can forward to the council the plan commission's recommendation to choose one of these four. So that's the intent right tonight is just to uh, uh, introduce these to you. I hope I did forward a link for you all. I don't know if you all got it uh, with the opportunity uh, to to go on my 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 little download page and, and download these things if you want take a look at them beforehand but at, at some date probably it's going to be the next meeting uh we will have the committee to forward a recommendation to you to forward uh, to, to forward a a recommendation to the council to choose one of these consultants and that's all that's really all i have on the agenda for this evening on this one i do have something i need to add though um, and I forwarded at your places a couple of uh, administrative actions that we have taken between the time I forwarded the, the plan, the council, or I'm sorry, the agenda to you. And today uh, I've made two uh, administrative interpretations of the ordinance. And the, the ordinance does require me to submit those to you in writing so you know I'm doing it. Uh, the first one is a map error correction. In this particular case, it's 10645 East US 36. It's a, a property that's uh, immediately to the west of the Schaefer Auto Body Shop. That whole area is owned by one individual. And apparently when that area was annexed back in 2002, when we adopted an ordinance, a map, well, we had actually <laughs> miss uh classified uh, a portion of the property so a portion of the property is owned r2 it's all been used commercially it was used commercially before it was brought into the town uh, and when we annexed it what the annexation ordinance specified was that the the uh zoning classification that it was in the county is the zoning classification we're supposed to bring it into the town in. uh the the petitioner Originally, he submitted it. I went back to the zoning maps of 2009. I saw that it was zoned R2. And so I said, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's zoned R2. Um, there really wasn't an error. You're just going to have to rezone it. And then he went back to the annexation ordinance, went back and got the county maps from Hendricks County uh, back to the 2002 maps, which clearly showed that it was all zoned C2. And so we made the administrative determination that that it was in fact a map error and we corrected it on the maps and so i'm informing you of that um, the second one is a little bit different dpr 2307 and that's the seven brew at stanfield crossing the issue on this one was on september today we had a pre-construction meeting and that pre-construction meeting uh the plan commission uh, approved that particular one the seven brew with a condition that they provide a 10 foot asphalt path along uh, US 36. What somehow we missed was when Stanfield Crossing was approved, the commercial subdivision, their, their construction plans showed a five foot concrete uh, sidewalk. And when Bank of America was approved, uh, which is immediately to the west of the Seven Brew, um, their plans showed a five foot concrete sidewalk and so during the course of the pre-construction meeting i just made the call and said hey look we're just going to require them to to perpetuate the five foot uh concrete 
sidewalk rather than install one section of a 10 foot path, which it would be a five foot sidewalk on either side of it. So that's, that is the modification I made to this DPR, DPR 2307. I replaced the 10 foot asphalt path with a five foot concrete sidewalk. So those are the administrative changes I made in really in the last week. And I'd be happy to answer any questions on those and uh, on the consultants. Uh, thank you. Uh, lot one is that seven brew then in your uh, lot one is Bank of America. So then they're lot two. Then? They're lot two. Yeah. Seven brews is a lot too. And I included on yours showing you uh, the uh, 10 foot asphalt path that was approved on the development plan. It's highlighted. Mm -hmm. And then the five foot sidewalks that were approved both for uh, the Bank of America and for the, um, the development as a whole. So what about lot three then? Which one will that be? Lot okay. three will be five foot. Uh, sidewalk that as well. Done. Okay, yeah. so you, you changed that at the same time? Yeah, well, they're actually constructing it now. So they're constructing the sidewalks with the develop with, with the subdivision. And so the sidewalks are basically about 80% complete. There's a section that isn't complete, and that's only because they're waiting for a, on AT&T to remove, remove the utilities. And once AT&T removes its fiber utilities uh, from that area, they'll, put it, they'll, they'll connect the sidewalk. So that should be done sometime next spring then, right? Oh, it'll be done before the, yeah, it'll be done in the fall. I don't know. They, they told me today that ATT is moving it this week. Okay. So I would expect, yeah, they've been working with AT&T for a while though. Hey, Bill, with regard to the comprehensive plan, so assuming that the organization or company is selected with the next couple of months, what's the goal date to have them complete the work and it presented to the town and it yeah. implemented. The goal date is to have it to the council before the end of next year. So the council has uh, appropriated funds for this year and they have appropriated funds for next year and they have an appropriated funds for 2025. And they did it that way to cut the cost in half. So they can do half this year, half that next year. Um, so the idea is to start it this year, get it completed next year on budget. That's, that's the plan. I'm, I'm hoping that it works. Uh, but we're not looking to revamp or redo the whole comprehensive yeah. plan, are we? No, no, and we're not looking to. We're looking at, at to correct some stuff. Well, like uh, we have these infills, you know, these 10 acres, these seven acre parcels. Those are, those are things we're going to address. Right. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to clearly, more clearly define the, the planning area first off. Uh, the planning area is not very clearly defined in the comprehensive plan, which can make uh, establishing zoning in areas difficult. Because the, what the planning area does is define where you want to annex. Um, and so if you don't have that well defined and you annex something, all of a sudden you're, can you exercise zoning authority on that? Is that in your comp plan or is that not in your comp plan? Because if it's not in your comp plan, you can't exercise zoning authority in, in that area. And so we want to define that a lot better than what it is right now. The other thing is we have little 10 acre parcels all over the place. And the comp plan is largely silent on these little 10 acre parcels, but people are, are gobbling those little 10 acres up and, and, and developing them. Um, so when we look at doing this, are we also then going to look at maybe changing the zoning of those various 10 acre parcels? Uh, not, not necessarily unless, the council directs us to. Um, I'm not a big proponent of involuntary rezonings. Um, however, I will. I mean, I did it. In, I did. I, I. I'm a little gun shy because I, uh, the council, and when I was the planning director of Greenwood, uh, the Greenwoods council directed me to do an involuntary rezoning on like eight parcels, and of course, it caused a big, big stink, and. Uh, the council then rejected all those rezoning. So I went through all the, <laughs> I went through all the work and all that, and all those property owners came to the council, and the council then rejected the the involuntary rezoning that they requested. So I'm I'm a little bit leery of doing that, but I'll do it. It's well, what if maybe we don't change the zoning, but maybe we identify what can go within that zoning. You know, mm -hmm. take that broad list and shrink it down to a narrow list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what we would end up doing is 
So it would end up being a, a, a process where we would start out by defining the, the, the comp plan, define things a little bit more concretely. And whether that means that turns into a zoning ordinance amendment uh, or one of the overlay district amendments, that, that's definitely something that the comp plan can, can uh, accomplish. Bill, do we have it's as simple as uh, ch changing it on the future land use map so that you could say, well, gosh, we thought that was going to develop commercially. Now it's all <coughs> residential. We've got this parcel left. So let's just make that residential on the future land use map. We won't change the zoning. But what's the first thing you guys look at in a reason? What's the comp plan say? Sometimes it's that subtle uh, of a change. And then when Bill talks about it, it sounds crazy. What do you mean our jurisdictional area? But not too long ago, when the one comp plan was done, it defined the jurisdictional, like our view, our vision to be Washington Township. Well, then the airport property came along outside of that and the town annexed that and we had no, uh, no guidance. And so sometimes your comp plan can look outside your, where, where you really think you're going to annex. Sometimes you have to be a little bigger uh, just in case something like that comes along. And the airport property, Greg, you were here and remember, but it was not addressed in the comp plan at all. That's a good example of one that would have, when, it, when that, and that in fact incurred. Given how quickly these infill lots are being developed, does it, does the staff believe that the December 2024, you know, goal date of having the comp plan updated is that, um, you know? Yeah, I mean, good? Uh, so still the, the vast majority of cases, they're still going to have to come to you uh, if they want, like if they want to change the zone, <laughs> if they want something a little bit more dense. See, the issue with these like 10 acre parcels usually is it's just not cost effective for a lot of these people to develop to the R2 zoning standards. So they need something a little bit more dense. And in that case, they have to rezone the property and come to you uh, for a recommendation and to the council for, for approval. So yeah, a lot of these 10 acre parcels are zoned R2. And if they zoned R2, then they still have to come to you for some sort of approval before they, some sort of discretionary approval before they go into the non-discretionary approvals. So I, I, do, I would ask that what would keep us from hitting the end of the year next year? Because the last time we did this seems like it drug on for two plus years. Uh, one thing is the scope is trying to keep the scope. So like I said, we're not intending to do a, a ground up thing. We're, we're trying to correct some deficiencies in the current document. Uh, the other thing that what would not do it is if we change something and it causes some sort of, uh, you know, con controversy. So to get this completed, it, what if we're working backwards, what's the process to go through the approval? Because isn't it twice with us, twice with the council? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I honestly, I would have to go back. It's been almost a decade since I. One, one time. With both? Yes. One, it's a it's a public hearing to amend the comprehensive plan. You all are asked to approve the comprehensive plan, not a recommendation. <clears throat> it has to be approved by you and the town council. Two approvals. Okay. And each each time you, you might get a preliminary look at it, but when it actually shows up on your agenda for action, generally then so so if you, if there are things you don't like in that preliminary draft, usually there's a preliminary draft that comes to you, Bill's right. It, the scope of your changes may indicate a delay, but I might answer your question differently, Paul. I would say based upon my experience, that the number one reason there are delays in an amendment of a comp plan is the consultant. And when we did our last zoning ordinance, this is what we ran into, right, Greg? Well, I'm laughing, yes. Okay. <laughs> I know why one client has been waiting four years on the draft of the new zoning plan. So. I, I would say to Jennifer and to Bill and to the others who are on this committee is one of the key questions would be, this is our timetable, can you meet our timetable? And getting that early draft, um, if you're looking at the end of the year, then by May or so, you'll want to see the draft. Is there, can we put uh, penalties in the RQ that says that delivery by a certain date other than, or then 
put it to the advantage of moving that timeline along because if there's no incentive and we're dependent on the consultant then they've got control of that but the, the incentive is obviously funding because the council is only funding it through 2024. um so the, the two things the funding is uh such that we're not going to do a you know a complete overall I think where, uh, where, where consultants run into time delays is when they want to do uh, public input meeting after public input meeting after public input meeting. And I think what we would do, what I would suggest that we do with the consultants, keep the, the number of external meetings to the bare minimum, <laughs> you know, and just move it through the, through the process. Uh, since, you know, if we're doing a, a complete update to the plan, maybe it would be a two year process with lots of public input. But I think we are talking about a plan that's only six years old. We just need to fix some of the some of the problems with it. And I think we can basically keep to the bare minimum as far as public input. We don't need to do survey instruments and those sorts of things. We don't need to do a lot of discussion on the history of the town and, you know, do all that research. We can keep it down to, you know, what are the land use classifications? What does the, what is the planning area boundary? What, uh, what are the land use recommendations? We can keep it fairly tight and we should be able to get there on time. So it's really more of a, a tweaking as yeah. opposed to an update. Update implies something more comprehensive than what you're to me than what you're wanting to do yeah i plan. mean if you're doing a, a massive update you usually start all the way at the beginning and you start doing some background information and you just start doing some population forecasting and all of these other sorts of things but we already did that but, six years ago yeah. this is so oh, we can skip that whole yeah. population Amending. forecast. And thing. Amending. We can make the assumption that the population forecast we did in 2017 are, this, are, are perfectly valid uh, assumptions, and we can just get into the meat of the, of the document rather than... And there hasn't been any massive change, like we haven't seen, for instance, an airport project or something else that wouldn't necessarily come into our scope that would completely change the way we're doing anything. There's nothing, there's been no massive, I mean the- Like the railroad's not shutting down. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, the railroad's not shutting down. Obviously the, the, the elephant in the room would be the Eastern Gray Plan unit development, which is gonna change the west side of the town. Mm -hmm. um, and so we will probably spend a lot of time on the west side of the town uh, in this thing to make sure our, uh, we've got some tight recommendations up there. Uh, we may look along the Reagan corridor because the Reagan corridor its character has changed because between 2017 and now we've had a lot of industrial development up and down the Reagan corridor. So we can we can tailor it to the areas where we've had something other than our typical the single family residential and strip commercial development, which would be those two general areas. Do, um, do we have anything in the plan today that I know there's the land use map, but that shows the zone, the zoning in the town because I've never seen anything that's comprehensive, like where the zoning starts and stops. So yeah, when it's you talk always about the been specific parcel. to a project or something. Yeah. You mean like a, like the corporate limits of the town? That and what the zone is. So maybe a long time ago we had some in one of our documents, but it seems in the comp plan we had the, the land use. And when we talk about zoning, it's... I, I'm listening to you about involuntary zoning. Yeah. It, it also doesn't zoning help us with development around what do we want where? And if it's zoned with a zoning um, that we don't want that there, we got an opportunity to address that. Yeah. Even though I think I heard it's not easy. Well, it's not that it's not easy. It's just a simple zone map amendment. Honestly, you've seen, you've seen them a lot. The issue is when you start doing it involuntarily, one, the plan commission is the one that has to initiate that. Well, what typically happens is the council initiates and then directs the plan commission to initiate the rezone. Because the only, the only uh, body that can file a petition that doesn't require consent of the owner, I believe is a plan commission. The council may have that authority as well. Okay. Yeah. But the, the, the risk analysis is this that if you change the future land use map to say this is our vision 
you cannot get sued. If you, if you, if the town council or the planning commission wants to initiate a down zone to say that this is zone R2, we're changing it to R1. Now there are property interests involved and you might have someone sue you for inverse condemnation saying, I bought the land and thought I could put R2 housing there. Now here you come along and you're taking my rights away. And so from a risk management point of view, we would always prefer uh, changing the future land use map because it has no risk. And although the risk of an inverse condemnation might be low, it certainly is a lot higher if you down, I call it down zoning, when you change it from a more intense use to a low use. Now, if you go up, nobody seems to care about that. That's that's the thing you have to weigh. So, so I, I ask this because it's the one, understanding the land use, but understanding what do we have today that we're dealing with, which then is the plan, plan commission in an approval body, or is it a planning body? It's both. And so, I cover this in training. It depends on what you're, what issue you're talking about. So, so you know where I'm going on this. I mean, do we initiate uh, looking at things or do we approve what comes before us all the time? You can initiate text amendments and you can initiate rezones. Um, I would hope with town council support or staff support. But you can do those two things in terms of being the initiator. Okay. And when you do that, though, you, you just bear with me. When you do those things, you are still an advisory body because about both things, whether it be a reason or text amendment, you're still advised. You're still just making a recommendation. You're not the final word on either of those, right? Right. The council. The, the council is. When you do plats and when you do DPRs, you're now you're zoning. You are the final word. That means you're doing zoning. And so you you wear both hats depending on what the topic is in front of you. So does the future land use map um, take into account areas in what I'm going to call the Avon community that are actually a part of unincorporated Hendricks County? Because we've got pockets of that all over the place, too. Yes. And when we're doing land use, I mean, in zoning, obviously, we can't zone what's happening in unincorporated Hendricks County. But does land use assume that this this 20 acre parcel at some point may become part of Avon. So we're that's, going to include yeah, that. Yeah, and that, that's what I mean about establishing a planning area because you establish a planning area and that means you intend to exercise zoning authority in this area either at now or point. in the future. And so, in fact, to establish zoning, you have to, that has to be, I mean, the, the state law basically says in order to establish zoning in an area, you have to have it in your comprehensive plan. You have no choice. And so what towns and cities and count, well, not necessarily counties, but towns and cities will do is establish areas outside their corporate limits uh, just to show this is where we intend to annex. And then they, if they do annex it, they can exercise zoning authority without amending their comp plan. I had a, we had a, uh, I don't know if I want to start stories, but I, in Greenwood, I had a, I had a, we had done a comp plan update and on the west, we had gone out to the railroad on the west side of Greenwood and we realized we were just going to go to our corporate limits on the west side. We were never going to try to annex into White River Township and literally after we'd adopt that comprehensive plan, one of the little subdivisions decided they wanted to be annexed uh, and we had taken them out of our comp plan. So we had to first amend our comp plan to include that neighborhood back into the comp plan because we couldn't exercise zoning authority over that neighborhood until we'd done that sort of thing. So what what I what we're trying to do is better define uh, our planning area, for lack of a better term, uh, so that in the event we do get an annexation, we're not amending the comp plan to do the annexation in the zoning. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You're planning ahead. Yeah. And we may show areas on our future land use map, and Danville and Brownsburg and Plainfield may show the same mm -hmm. areas. And that's okay, also. Because it's just speculative, basically. It's the future. It's the future. Right. Yeah. And it may or may not happen. Yeah. Right. Speculative. Good word. They've already done that. Yeah. And we've. Yeah. Yeah, they're showed the entire time. Yeah, that's right. 
and we re, uh, we we do uh, take out of our planning areas areas that are in the corporate limits of other jurisdictions because we can't ex obviously right. can't exercise zoning authority in those areas. So that's one of the other things we do in this update. We look at areas that our sister towns have annexed into and say, okay, well, we can no longer exercise zoning authority in there, so there's no use having it in our plan. And the case that said that was Avon versus Plainfield. 2002, maybe? Let's just say we had a disagreement. With Do you have a cause number for that? I don't. <laughs> Sorry. Don't bring back old memories. We won. That's all I got. Is it appropriate for the plan commission members to give um, input as to these? Proposals. That's why I forward them to you. Yeah. Uh, the one thing is providing input to us, uh, to me, and then I would share it with the committee. Of course, uh, Ms. Spencer is going to be the plan commission's representative, for lack of a better but term. But that goes needs to all go through you. But it can't go to me, or you could go to, you go to her as well, and she could bring it up during when we have our meeting. Either either way, you do it. But I, if you bring it to me, all I'm going to do is bring it up to the the five people sitting around the table, um, and then. We'll have a discussion. We'll come to some sort of consensus. I mean, I've already reviewed them. Ian has already reviewed them, and Ian and I already disagree. So when you got five people, uh, you got five people. I'm sure that when the town manager gets uh, uh, gets a look at it, he's going to have a different take on it. I am a trained mediator, just FYI. So. <laughs> okay. Anything else uh, for the good of the order? Anything else, uh, Bill? Nothing, nothing All for right. me. All right, in that case, this meeting is adjourned.